Hi everyone, I'm Chinning from Harvard. This is a joint work with Probiba from MIT on OD inspired analysis for the biological version of OYA's role in solving streaming PCA. So as you can see from the title, it's a little bit lengthy. And due to the time limit of the talk, let's only focus on the biological side and streaming PCA in the talk. Okay, let's get started. So the main biological object in this talk is retina. In hindsight, the retina can be viewed as a shallow circuit with the following structure. The input are lights, and it goes to the first layer, which are photoreceptors, and then the last layer is the ganglion cells, and the output will go to cortex. Let's give a more quantitative uh, description. The light is about the order of gigabytes per second, and there are about 100 million uh, photoreceptor cells. Well, there's only a million ganglion cells in the output layer. So this suggests that there's a huge compression going on in the retina. In addition to simply uh, recording the input visual information, the retina is also doing something more brilliant. In particular, the retina will change adapt uh, according to the environment. For example, imagine that you are skiing a white mountain and suddenly you fell into a, a cave. So the, ch the environment changed a lot from bright to dark. However, from experience, we know that your eyes adapt in few seconds. While well, there's a huge compression uh, in the retina, as we saw before, it is very fascinating how a retina can uh, do this adaptation so efficiently. So the goal of this work is to provide a theoretical insight on why and how retina achieve fast adaptation and what could be the underlying compression mechanism. And due to the interdisciplinary nature of this uh, problem, we have to set up the methodology properly. In particular, uh, there are three important ingredients we have to take care of. First one is the computational task. We have to identify the right task that capture the experimental observation. For example, the task could be a classification problem. Second, we have to find a good mathematical model to work on, such as this mathematical model can be implemented in the bio biological, under biological constraints. Third, the mechanism we found should uh, satisfy the biologically realistic time scale as mentioned before. Namely, the adaptation happens only in few seconds and very efficient. Okay, let's start from the computational task. So before that, we need to have some knowledge from biology, which is the receptive field. Recall that the first layer of the retina is the photoreceptor cells, and the last layer are ganglion cells, and there are some synapses connect them. Receptive field is a collection of photoreceptors that corresponding to the activity pattern of ganglion cell. Specifically, when the light shines on photoreceptors and the ganglion cell got excited, those photoreceptors are called in the excitatory receptive field of this ganglion cell. On the other hand, uh, if, the, if the ganglion cell got inhibited, then uh, those photoreceptors are called in the inhibited receptive field and marked as blue here. The information of receptive field will be encoded in the synapse. So now let us try to explain the compression phenomenon uh, with the concept of receptive field. A key signature of ganglion cells in, a, in the empirical lead is a center surround structure of receptive field. And this means that uh, the receptive field of ganglion cells have a concentric structure where the center photoreceptor will tend to excite the ganglion cell and the Surround photoreceptor will try to uh, will, uh, tends to inhibit the ganglion cell, or vice versa. On the other hand, the seminal work of Arctic and Relich show that the principal component analysis-like solution can produce the center surround receptive field and maximize the information in the retina. This matches the experimental observation and suggests that PCA could be a candidate computational problem uh, done by the retina. Now, we know that PCA could be a good candidate, and due to the online nature of retina, it is very natural to study the streaming setting. While streaming PCA is actually a very well-studied problem in computer science, let us see what's uh, the formal definition. So there's an unknown distribution D over the unisphere of an n-dimensional Euclidean space, where the covariance matrix is naturally defined as the expectation of xx transpose, sample from D. And the input to streaming PCA is a bunch, is a sequence of uh, vectors sample from D independently in the stream. 
The goal is to use only linear space to approximate the top eigenvector of the covariance matrix. So this is a classic and well-studied non-convex optimization problem. And we are interested in how can Retina implement streaming TCM to solve it. Okay, next, let us move on to identify a right mathematical model to enable theoretical analysis. So recall that Retina can be uh, simplified as a feedforward two-layer circuit where the input layer are photoreceptors and the output layer are ganglion cells. And for simplici simplicity, let's focus on a single ganglion cell. We know that the synapse uh, encodes the receptive field information, and here we use an n-dimensional real vector to denote that. And n is the number of photoreceptors. The input lights can also can be uh, modeled as an n-dimensional vector, which can be sort of as the input to the streaming PCA problem. And ganglion cell, we consider it as a linear neuron, where the potential is the inner product between input x and the synapse with w. And then the dynamics will change the weight accordingly, and we receive a new input and, re and change the potential respectively and change the weight vector and so on. So the question here is that, what kind of synaptic update rules here can solve streaming PCM? So in biology, synapse can vary respect to time, and this is known as synaptic plasticity. However, we also know that uh, such update cannot be arbitrary. It has to be biolo biologically plausible. For, for example, it should be local in the following sense. The weight update should only depends on the potential of the end neurons and the previous weight. This is also formally known as the Habian plasticity, which is a famous rule stating that neurons will fire to, who fire together will wire together. However, we can also observe that a simple uh, implementation of Habian plasticity is not stable in the sense that the weight might be driven, driven uh, unboundedly. So another important criteria, biological criteria we need to match, meet is the homeostatic plasticity, which states that the, 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 uh, the synaptic weight should be stabilized. Okay, to sum up, uh, to understand the compression mechanism in Retina, we recognize a uh, streaming PCA as a good uh, computational task and use a synaptic learning rate in a linear neural model as the model working, we are working on. And then we also need to, the mechanism also has to be biologically realistic time scale in the sense that it has to have tiny dependency on the number of photoreceptors. And the synaptic learning rule we consider here is the OYAS rule, which proposed by OYAS in almost 40 years ago. So OYAS rule is one of the very few famous uh, synaptic learning rule that satisfies both homeostatic passivity and Habian passivity simultaneously. Instead of directly throwing the definition, let's try to give a more intuitive uh, derivation. So the first key idea of OYAS rule is to mimic power methods in a streaming way. So specifically, we apply the co uh, empirical covariance matrix on the weight vector and then weighted by some learning rate. However, one can also immediately uh, observe that this violates the synaptic scaling property, meaning that uh, the weight can grow, uh, could, could grow um, unbounded. So the next idea is to apply normalization, which is simply divide the weight vector by the L2 norm, so that the homeostatic passivity will always satisfy because WT will always have the unit norm. However, one can also soon realize this update rule is not local. Why? Because to update the first coordinate, we require the knowledge of other coordinates due to the, uh, the norm computation. So the, the less brilliant idea of OYA is to do a Taylor expansion with respect to the learning rate eta in the de denominator and then truncate the nonlinear term in the power power series extension. So OYAS uh, derived this rule, and now this rule is known as OYAS rule. And with some simple check, we can see that this satisfies the local update, and then Habian PCA is satisfied. As a historical remark, the, the rule uh, without hair extension is also well studied and known as a different, uh, it's very different from biological OYAS rule, so we call them ML OYAS rule to distinguish. Great, now let us put OYAS rule in the context of Retina and how to how, and see how Retina can implement OYAS rule. 
So recall that we have list two two layer circuits where the input are the input to a streaming PCA, and we have weight and then the linear neuron and OES rule basically provides us how to update the synaptic. So there has been extensive work in both experimental and computational neuroscience studying the effectiveness of OES rule. However, the theoretical understanding prior to our work is very, very limited. In particular, only convergence in the limited result have been known before. One excuse for the slow development in theoretical work is that the higher order term in the OS rule makes analysis very difficult. So typically, people can only derive the result of such form, which only provide convergence in the limited guarantee. While we know that uh, Retina adapts efficiently, convergence uh, rate analysis is of great importance to provide more insight. So in this work, we give the first convergence rate analysis, and specifically, we match the information theoretical lower bound in the sense that it's only, the rate is only off by some low community factors. And as a side product, we, uh, the result also improves the best known result on streaming PCA. And there are three highlights of our main theory. First, the convergence rate has tiny dependency on dimension, which is the number of photoreceptors. So this uh, satisfies the biological realistic time scale property. Second, the guarantee we have is for all time, meaning that the existential uh, quantifier lies in the probability. This is of biological interest explained later. And third, the learning rate in our main theory can be set in a wide range. So basically here we can set it to one over log t, which is quite large from the what previous theory can handle. This is also of biological uh, interest explained in the next slide. So now let us uh, put our theoretical result into the biological context. Recall that the retina efficiently adapts to different environments in spite of the high dimensional input. This relates to two important biological perspectives. First, the efficient coding principle, which says that the main goal of a sensory system is to maximize the information in neural coding. While this finds great success in explaining uh, retina in a single environment uh, using PCA, we don't know what would be the underlying dynamic if the environment is changing. So in this work, we basically provide the first provable explanation for fast adaptation using OER's rule, explaining the dynamics uh, of retina underlying the efficient coding principle. The second biological perspective is a continual learning. As the living system constantly change environments, uh, we expect that adaptation to happen throughout the lifetime efficiently. However, how, can, how, can, how is this possible? Uh, how a bio, uh, biological uh, a living body can continue uh, having efficient learning. Yeah, so recall that in our main theorem, the learning rate can be quite large when even, even the time is large. And also the guarantee is for all time. This suggests that biological uh, OES role can last for, for a long time and provide uh, explanation for retina, having continual learning. Great. And due to the time limits, we only were well, going to have few words on the technical side. So recall that the difficulty uh, of analyzing biological OES flow is the high order term in the update dynamics, so to speak, like this term. And to resolve this issue, we use two main techniques. First, uh, we consider the continuous analogous of uh, OES flow by setting the learning rate to be close to zero and let get the inspiration to, to find the right way to analyze the discrete uh, dynamics. Second, we use a, a, a stopping time framework which provides flexibility and nearly optimal convergence rate. Yeah, so please see the full version of our paper for more details. And we also have a follow-up paper focusing on the techniques and solve other three different machine learning problems. To conclude, if, let's take a step back to the big picture on the interplay between CS, NAS, and neuroscience. So in the different parts of the brain, there are fascinating mechanisms performing non-trivial computational tasks in a surprising efficient manner. In neuroscience, there have been great successes in having abundant recordings on the experimental side, and many theoretical models explain static, static mechanism pretty well. However, it lacks of theoretical explanation on the dynamical side. In a more CS language, 
we have very less knowledge in what the underlying algorithm implemented in the brain. So it is of great interest to study neuroscience through the lens of CS and math, but it might also be beneficial for CS people to learn from the brain, which encodes the wisdom from nature. This is the end of the talk. Uh, thank you for your attention.